Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to work with 3D objects in Apple Motion. This is kind of a newer capability in Apple Motion and it's really exciting to see. Here is this project we're going to be working on today. We've got some live action video mixed in with this 3D drone. Now there are 3D objects built into Apple Motion already. You can find them by heading over to your library and down here, 3D objects. And there are lots of 3D objects for you to play with here in Apple Motion. But if this list of 3D objects isn't exactly what you need for your project, there are other places to source them. For instance, the Sketchfab website, I will link to that below so you can check it out. Here's what it looks like. And the most important thing to know is that you need the USDZ file type. If you search USDZ on Sketchfab, you can see all of the different 3D models that are available for purchase that will work in Apple Motion. And of course, you can search more specifically by object. Let's go drone. And if you want an animated 3D object, select animated. And this drone, which is what we're going to be working with today, is in fact animated. You can see the propellers spin around. This thing is pretty cool. I've already purchased it. Yeah, it's a little pricey, but if you have the Honey extension, I find that you do get some discounts with these downloads. So you definitely want that as well. I'll link to that too if you don't have that, okay? All right, so here we are in Apple Motion. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in this 3D model, this USDZ file. And here it is, it might be a little tough for you to see at this point because we've got nothing underneath it. I'm gonna fix that for us real quick. Let's just drop in for now a color solid so we can really see that 3D model in action. I'm going to scale it up so we can get a really good look at it. All right, so the first thing I'm noticing here is that I can see the camera lens on the drone. The drone is facing us and I actually want it for my project to spin away and be looking the other direction. So just like with anything else in Apple Motion, it's so simple. Let's head on over to our inspector window. Let's go to properties. I'm gonna drop down this rotation and let's spin this guy on the Y axis to get that 360 degree look at him. And there it is. It's, it even says DJI on the back. Like this is really what this drone looks like. And here's the animation. You can see it's got some drift and it tilts and it's pretty great. I'm excited to work with this. So now let's start our project. I'm gonna bring in a drone shot. And coincidentally, this drone shot was in fact shot with the Mavic 2 drone. Now let's work with this 3D object. So what I want to have happen is for this drone to kind of drop into our frame from above and then hang for a second and then fly really far ahead of our shot, way into the distance. So I'm just gonna do that with keyframing, just like you would do with any object in Apple Motion. I'm gonna select it in my project pane. Let's head on over to properties and make a keyframe on the position line and also on the rotation lines and also on the scale lines. And I'm going to change my Y value to bring this out of frame. And I'm also going to change my X value so it's kind of tilting down a little bit. Now let's move down a little bit in our shot and make more keyframes on those same lines. I'm gonna bring this down on the Y position and I'm going to rotate it on the X so it's sort of evening out. And let's see how that looks. All right, cool. Now I want it to just kind of hang for just a second. So I'm going to make keyframes on position, rotation again, and scale. And then I want it to woo, take way off into the distance. I'm gonna drag my playhead further down in my timeline, not quite to the end. And I'm going to make keyframes again on position, rotation, and scale. I might not change all of these, but I'd like to have the option. I'm going to dial down the scale all the way to zero. And I'm gonna raise up that position on the Y. And let's see how that looks. Pretty good. All right, so I do like what we have going on, but if you've ever flown a drone on a sunny day, you know that often you get a shadow underneath it. So let's add in a shadow, why not, right? The first thing I'm going to do is select my drone and I'm gonna right click on it and duplicate. So now we have a copy of the drone, you see that? And I'm actually going to right click this and group it. And I'm going to now bring it down to where the shadow would be. So down here toward the grass, we're gonna make adjustments here. Don't you worry about that. 
but it's important that we group the copy before we make adjustments on the position because we don't want to mess with these keyframe placements that we made earlier, right? So now we can adjust the position of that copy without modifying these keyframes. So I'm gonna select group one here in my project pane because the next thing I'm going to add, I want it to be above this group I created with the, just the copy of our drone. So I'm gonna select group one, I'm gonna to head to the center of my screen and I'm going to draw a big rectangle. And let's head on over to the inspector window, hit shape. We're gonna turn off outline, turn on fill, and we're gonna make the color of this black. And now I'm selected on my rectangle. I'm gonna head up to object and I'm going to select add image mask. And in this source field here, I'm going to select the group that contains the copy of my drone and I'm gonna drop it right in there. And now we've got this shadow and the propellers match perfectly. The motion matches perfectly, the tilt and everything. But we're gonna make some changes to make it look more realistic. I'm gonna bring that rectangle to the very beginning of my timeline here. And now let's play with the copy of our drone. So let's head on over to the project pane, make sure we're selected on the proper thing. I'm going to select not the group, but the actual copy of the drone. And we're going to make some adjustments here. We wanna match the keyframes on our original drone. So I'm going to select that copy, head on over to properties in the inspector window, and here's our keyframe. But this time I actually want this shadow to be way down here and I want it to be smaller. And now let's jump to the next keyframe. And I actually want that to be even smaller still than our first keyframe. 86 looks good to me. Now let's use these arrows here to jump to our next keyframe. And again, we're gonna make this value 86. And then let's jump to the next keyframe and we're gonna have it be at zero because it's gonna shrink now right along with our real drone. So what you see here is that if you think about it in real life, the shadow of the drone would actually be bigger the higher the drone is. And then it, as it gets closer to the ground, that shadow would shrink, right? So that's the effect we've got here. I am going to, again, be selected on the copy in our project pane. Let's head on up to filters. We're gonna go to blur and let's add a Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna crank up the value of that blur really high. And so let's queue up our playhead to our first keyframe. We can just select our copy of the drone in our project pane to make sure. Head over to filters and let's add a keyframe in the exact same spot on the blur. Now let's go back over to properties, arrow over to the next keyframe, head on over to filters, and we're gonna bring down that blur because the shadow would naturally get sharper as the drone got closer to the ground. And then we're gonna leave that for the rest of our project. That's gonna work just fine. And the last adjustment we need to make, again, let's select the copy of our drone in the project pane, head on over to properties. And we wanna make sure again, our keyframes are lined up here. Let's make one more keyframe at opacity. I'm gonna dial down this opacity. Let's jump to our next keyframe, make another keyframe on opacity, and I'm gonna dial it up a bit. So let's take a look at our final result. So there you go. That is how you source and use 3D objects in Apple Motion. You guys, thank you so much for creating with me today. I'll link to that Sketchfab site below and I will see you again.